gang, I'm Luke and welcome to Down From The Attic. I'm a huge fan of the Disney parks. I love Disney and I love theme parks. I'm a complete Disney nerd, so the Disney parks, they hold a special place for me. There's been a number of games out over the years based on Disneyland theme parks, such as the Pirates of the Caribbean games and also the recent Jungle Cruise game. But today I'm looking at a vintage one and one of the rarest games in my collection. This is the Euro Disneyland board game. Oh boy. Let's get this thing down and have a look at it. First off, box art. And it shows loud and proud the massive amount of theme in this game has. Lifting the lid off the box, good lord. This is absolutely packed with plastic pieces here. There's the board here and man, the art is just beautiful here. It reminds me of the park maps you get in Disneyland and there's loads of little details such as the paddle steamer, Peter Pan's pirate ship, Big Thunder Mountain, it's all wonderful. Disney fans will quickly notice that the locations of certain Disneyland Paris rides are in totally the wrong place but I can forgive this, they've opted to keep the larger game pieces to the back of the board and the smaller up front. It makes sense. And speaking of game pieces, damn. There's four play pieces, four Mickey hats, four bags, four teddies, four balloons, three Alice's of different size, six bottles, the Disneyland Railroad, a spaceship, this magnet, Big Thunder Mountain and its runaway mine train, Captain Hook's pirate ship, a treasure island with treasure chests, and a gorgeous looking Sleeping Beauty castle. Set up, and this isn't as lengthy as you'd think for all these pieces. The play pieces slotted to their bases, and curiously, the figures fit on these bases that have a ball bearing in the bottom of them, and I'll show why soon. The three Alice figures go next to the maze, and the bottles land on these green spots on the maze. Thunder Mountain put the top portion onto the lower, place the shovel here, the sign clips in here. Under the train is a ball bearing, place the train before the sign and move the sign in place to hold the train back. The yellow ball rests here, next to the track. The Orbitron is very simple, place the ship here, place the satellite here. Captain Hook's pirate ship, add the decks and the sails to the ship and place on the board. Place the six treasure chests onto the island and add the palm tree. Sleeping Beauty Castle, add the dragon head and the drawbridge to the base, place the castle door on these resting clips and this green splitter piece, that slots inside the castle. Add the castle to the base, add the turrets to the castle and we're done. Assembled, this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. The pieces are some of the nicest I've ever seen in a Milton Bradley game and the sculpt on this Alice is perfect. There's no mistaking who she is. The pirate ship has lovely detailing to it. The sails, the rigging, Thunder Mountain with its mesas, the steampunk look of the rocket ship, and the castle looms over all this and takes centre stage on the board. The figure pieces are again really gorgeous sculpts. Everything in this game has clearly been designed to a very high quality. This is really ticking a lot of boxes. In the game, you'll need to make your way around the park and collect four souvenirs from the four different rides. The Mickey hat, balloons, a bag and a teddy bear. No really, that's the objective of the game. Come to Euro Disney and buy a bunch of souvenirs. Collect your souvenirs and be the first to join Mickey and his friends on Main Street USA for the parade and you win. Playing the game, each ride will afford you a souvenir. The bag from Thunder Mountain, the Mickey Mouse ears from Captain Hook's pirate ship, the teddy bear from the Orbitron, and the balloons from Alice's Curious Labyrinth. Everyone starts at Main Street USA. Roll to move and you follow the path clockwise around the board. The path loops around the board and ultimately, you're aiming to land on these squares with the souvenirs on to access a challenge with the hope of winning that souvenir. If you fail the challenge, you have to carry on around the board and well, better luck next time. Landing on a castle square on the board, you can automatically jump to an attraction and try to win that souvenir, and this is a very handy way of moving around the board quickly and getting to the attractions you need souvenirs from. Dotted around the board too are pictures of certain Disney characters. If you land on one of these, you can graciously invite another player to join you on that square. Ain't that nice? No, no, this is used to stop opponents from getting to where they want to go to. 
One of the things I find interesting looking at the Disney characters picked for this game, they're all classic Disney, and this is all because the game came out in 1992. No Beauty and the Beast, no Lion King, no Toy Story, Hercules, Aladdin, those films hadn't come out yet. It's quite nice to see the classics represented here. Also kind of shows the growth of the park too. You can opt to stick to the path but you're also able to hop onto the Disneyland Express if you're able to. You place your character piece on the carriage. Each train square is worth two of the regular path so it definitely benefits you. You can get around the park a lot quicker. You can kick other players off the train if you're able to reach them so one player can't hog the train. It's a pretty fun system. Now let's take a look at the attractions and their souvenirs, starting with my favourite, Thunder Mountain. Your aim is to get the gold nugget, this yellow ball, to land in the minecart. You switch the sign setting the big Thunder Mountain train rolling down the mountain. It's pushed along by this ball bearing underneath it. The train nudges the gold nugget here and it's 1 in 3 chance if it will land in the minecart. However, if it lands on the shovel, you can pick up the shovel and the nugget and put it in this hole here for another try. It's a simple game of luck, but I can't deny that I love seeing the train roll down the mountain, it makes me smile every time. Winning this challenge gives you the souvenir bag and you need to get this before you can get the teddy bear. Next up, Captain Hook's pirate ship. This is by far the most difficult of the tasks. You need to take the six treasure chests and balance them on the ship. But the ship, it wants to fall over at the slightest move. It rests on its underside and on its rudder. The chests are quite big and it's not a matter of simply placing them on the deck of the ship. The sails and rigging act as obstacles there. You need to get inventive where you place these. Being successful, you win the Mickey Mouse ears and you can plug them on top of your figure. Neat! The Orbitron, conversely, is the easiest task. The front of the ship has a magnet, the satellite has a magnet and both repel each other. You need to carefully nudge the satellite with the ship along this path to the end. Do that, you win the teddy bear and it can go into your souvenir bag. Lastly is Alice's Curious Labyrinth. The aim is to get to the centre of the maze and meet the white rabbit. Alice starts at normal height and has to be at normal height before getting to the centre. On the maze you'll notice diamonds, hearts and clubs. Diamonds make you shrink, hearts are normal size and clubs make you grow big. You'll have to obey the logos on the board but also the ones on the bottles. The underside of the bottles have diamonds, hearts and clubs too. It's a matter of carefully choosing your route to the middle and being mindful of what bottles you've used and what might be left. Make it to the middle being normal sized and you get the balloons and you can peg those onto your figure. With all four souvenirs you need to get to the Tinkerbell Square on the board and get to Sleeping Beauty Castle for the final challenge. Tinkerbell magically transports you to the castle doors. You have to drop a tiny ball bearing down the back of the tower. If it falls into the dragon's mouth you have to try again next time, but if you're successful, the door to the castle will push your figure forward, it'll roll down the hill on the ball bearing base, onto Main Street USA to join the parade. You won the game! So my thoughts on this game? There's no denying that this is a simply beautiful looking game, and of all the games that are based on the Disney theme parks themselves, this is the one that appealed to me the most. There is a Magic Kingdom board game that's really nice looking as well, 
but the attractions in that game are just painted standees. They look really nice, but they've got no interaction on the game. I love how the rides in this game are actually used as challenges in the game and part of the gameplay. That being said, the challenges themselves are all very simple. Thunder Mountain and Sleeping Beauty Castle are all luck based, which shoot with a ball fall down. Alice's Curious Labyrinth is probably luck too down to which bottles you pick, but there is an element of choice there. Captain Hook's Pirate Ship and the Arbitron, those are definitely skill based, and I like that there's variety to the challenges in this game. It can be a bit of a pain if you roll the dice and hop over the square for the last souvenir you're after, but thankfully, you can get lucky and land on a square that will move you directly to it. If you had one criticism regarding the challenges in this game, it's that there's no Phantom Manor, and that's purely because Phantom Manor is one of my favourite rides. I love Phantom Manor and I love the Haunted Mansion, and it seems like a real misstep that they've not included it in this game. But Phantom Manor is featured on the manual art for the game, it makes me wonder if they originally intended it to be in the game. Ah well. The idea of going around collecting souvenirs could be seen a bit cynically and almost encouraging kids to do that in the real park. I can't deny how good the pieces look however and everything is perfectly on theme. And with the pieces too, down to the fact that there is a dragon under Sleeping Beauty Castle, I mean someone really took care with this game. And it's all the more impressive because this is one of the rarer board games in the Milton Bradley catalogue and it's all because it was sold in only one place in the entire world. Can you guess where? Yep, this game was only ever sold at Euro Disneyland and it's kind of staggering considering the amount of design and work that went into it that there would limit sales like that. And Disney are adverse to doing this right now, they do this with board games right now. Pirates of the Caribbean Battleships, Tower of Terror Clue, Haunted Mansion Game of Life, even a Star Wars Sabacc deck, you can only get these games in Disney parks. Quite an incentive to go again. As such, copies of this game infrequently surface on eBay, and even more so complete. The souvenirs tend to be the parts missing. Final thoughts, this is a very simple game to play. Roll and move your way around Euro Disneyland to attractions, solve the challenge, and get a souvenir. That being said, there is a heavy amount of luck to this game. Look what you roll, how a challenge is going to fare for you, whether you succeed or fail there, and what your opponents roll as well, whether they're going to move you further away from attractions and souvenirs that you need to get still. That being said, I really like this game. Uh, the theming is spectacular. I mean, it is absolutely on point. Uh, some of the nicest pieces I've ever seen in a board game and it really brings a bit of the magic of the parks home with you. It's nice just to have Euro Disney set up on your table in front of you. I am very, very happy to have this rare little oddity in my collection. Well, as always, I'm Luke. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.